worship leader. Oh, I just love to hear them saying, yeah, but what about the Word? Our, the most important thing in us finding somewhere to go and worship together should be whether the Word of God is being preached. Yet it is down on the list of most Christians today. They don't say, well, you know, I'm going to go somewhere where I can find the Word of God being preached. No, they want the band, they want the choir, they want the activities, they want the program. I'm telling you that in the day that we live in, you better get somewhere where they're preaching the Word of God because it's getting, it's getting less and less, amen, in the day that we live in. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, I believe it's Amos, you can correct me if I'm wrong, he said there's coming a day there will be a famine. Not for bread, not for water, but for hearing the Word of God. He said that they will travel from one sea to the other sea looking for God's Word and won't be able to find it. So now today, while we still got some places that are preaching the Word of God, please, if they don't have the band, kind of overlook that. If they don't have the song leader, if the pastor can't sing good, please forgive him and, and look over that. But find somewhere that's preaching the unadulterated, undiluted, unwatered down Word of the living God. Amen. And still preaching that Jesus saves us heals and delivers and they're able one way to get to heaven and that's through the bloody stained cross of Calvary and if the word of God is still true today like it always has been Amen. and will always be true so the enemy knows how important it is God knows how important it is we need to realize how important the word of God is yes. Amen it's the, it's the most important thing about a church Amen <laughs> Oh, but I love our drama team. Yeah, but what about the Word? I love our song leader in worship. Yeah, but what about the Word? I love that guitar picker. Yeah, but what about the Word? You can't build upon worship. You can't build upon the dance. Because sooner or later, Brother Bill, you don't feel like dancing. When you're laying on your back and you're getting ready to go into surgery for your heart, you don't feel no goosebumps. Oh, but if you got the Word of God... You don't have to go in there alone. Amen. Amen. You know that He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But He'll go in the, even in the operating room with you. Amen. Amen. You can build your life on God's Word. Amen. You can build your life on God's Word. Amen. You can't build it on most of the mess that the church puts forth today, but you can build it on God's Word. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail yes. against this foundation that I'm talking about this morning. Amen. I got more scriptures and you can find them all throughout the Word of God. Where Jesus told them about the seed. Do you remember that? I'm closing. He said, A sower went forth to sow. And he sowed seed, some on stony, some on the different grounds. And the one that and that, that fell on good ground, he said that brought forth some hundred, some sixty, some thirtyfold. And he goes on down to explain it to them because the disciples was like us a lot of times, you know, we're like, huh? Yeah. That's the way I am a lot of times. I open the Bible and I'll start reading and I'll say, huh? What? And Jesus will tell me, he said, I'll explain it to you. The seed is the Word of God. See, it all started with the Word of God. When it found good ground, a good foundation as it is, as it were, because for a plant, the foundation is really good soil. When it found that, it brought forth fruit. You know the fruit we were talking about a week or so ago? That has to be birthed from what the Word of God is doing in your life. Amen? Not from some chance. Not from some new thing that has came down the pipe. Not by some preacher imputing his, his uh, well, they, the anointing, transferring his anointing onto you. But from your spiritual growth, which cannot be done other than through the Word of God. The foundation that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. When Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4 and 8, we are troubled on every side, yet not, dismayed, not distressed. Why? Because we're built upon the rock. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Why? Because we're built upon the rock. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Why? Because we're built upon the rock. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Why? Because the gates of hell shall not prevail against this rock that we have built upon. No shaking it. Talk to you Tuesday night about the two men that built their houses. One on sand, the other one on rock. Same storms hit them. Same winds hit them. But the one that had his foundation wrong, the Bible says it failed and great was the fall of it. Great was the fall of it. I'm telling you how important the Word of God is this morning. You say, Brother Billy, I've heard this before. Well, let's just listen, listen one more time because we don't seem to be getting it. Amen. 
I'm not going to ask for a show of hands today of how much time we spend in God's Word this week and how much time we spend in front of the television because I don't want to embarrass all, embarrass all of us. But God's Word, and not just television, maybe some other books you've been reading. Maybe gossiping on the phone. Amen. Maybe gossiping on the phone. Or on Facebook. Amen. Fighting with somebody on Facebook. I ain't going to ask for no show of hands on that one right there. But I guarantee you, there ain't a one of us, no matter how much time we spend in it this week, and I hope all of us spend a lot of time there, but no matter how much time we spend in it, it wasn't enough. Just like as much worship as we can give Him, it ain't enough. We may think we've done our duty by showing up on Sunday morning for two hours, but we haven't. Amen? The Bible says to present your body a living sacrifice, and that's just your reasonable service. Amen? I'm closing with this this morning. I've used this analogy before and so has a lot of other preachers. And it's strange how God can take simple things with a bill and show you pictures. And He did that with His disciples. That's how He did the parables. But a long time ago, the Lord told me to look at the story of the three little pigs. And y'all know I've used several of them. <clears throat> several characters. No, I don't even know. But there was three of them and just for demonstration's sake this morning, we're going to talk about those as if they were Christians. And the first one, oh, he loved to shout. He loved to dance. He takes and he builds him a house, but he didn't much for the Word. Leave that for somebody else. And when the enemy comes, the enemy huffs and puffs and he huffs and he puffs. See that same wind, that same bad breath that blows on you, blows on everybody else too. And he huffed and he puffed until finally the house was gone. Why? Because he didn't have his foundation right. His house wasn't strong enough. He's built on something other than the Word of God. Because he loved to dance. He loved to shout. That didn't do much when the enemy came. That don't do much for when the enemy came. I love to dance. Y'all know that. Almost every church I ever preached a revival in, I've been in a floor at one time or another. I love it. But that ain't what sustains me. Because when I don't have the feeling, I've got to walk by faith in God's Word. Amen? Yeah. I gotta walk by faith in God's word. And the second one, anyway, I don't know what he was hung up on. He's probably hung up on the drama teams and the song leaders and the music. You see, and you've been to those churches where it had to be just right for them to worship God. It had to be just the right song, just the right singer. Everything had to be clicking. Oh, I can feel that worship coming on now. Wonder how good Paul and Silas felt there in the prison at midnight. Yeah. They worshiped God anyway. Amen. Can't go to the feeling, but this guy did. Oh, he loved that. He loved them drama teams and loved the, you know, all of the things they had going on at church. When the enemy came, his house is gone. Then he finds the third one. Oh, this right here been spending some time in prayer. This right here realizes, like the devil does and like God does, that God's word is the most important thing about your foundation, amen, that you can build upon. And he comes to his house and he knocks and says, Hey, little pig, little pig, let me come in. He says, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin must that beard like me. I'm going to huff and puff and I'm going to destroy you like these other guys. He said, you go ahead and huff. Yeah. You go ahead and puff. Amen. You go ahead and try to bring this thing down because my faith is built on the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the winds blow. Let the rains pound against my house. I know storms are coming, but bless God, I know this morning my faith is built on the Word of God and Jesus Christ. And that once the storm has subsided, just like the breath of the big bad wolf, he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed. Started a big sandstorm. You couldn't even see the house. Finally it's over. And if you're standing back as the dust began to recede after it began to fall, you see the big wolf, he done passed out and the house is still standing. Amen. Why? Because he was built upon a rock. The foundation that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. It would behoove you this morning to wake up and realize how important the Word of God is in your life. It's not just a story. It's not just a book written to the people back thousands of years ago. It's written for Sleese Butler. He preserved it for you, Brother Sleeves. He preserved it for me. He preserved it for you. Stand on it. Stand on it. You won't be blown around by every wind of doctrine. It comes along. Because you'll know the Word for yourself. Someone else have something this morning before we go.